Uh, so yeah, as Chris said, I'm a, a software engineer at VMware and a maintainer for Project Entria, which is a Kubernetes network plugin. Um, and today I have 15 minutes to talk to you about Open vSwitch, uh, what it is and why we think it's a, it's a good choice, a good fit for uh, Kubernetes networking. Uh, so what is Open vSwitch? Uh, Open vSwitch or OVS is a high performance programmable virtual switch. It's a virtual switch. So it's used to connect VMs and usually in Linux that's done with uh, tab interfaces and uh, connect containers, usually done with VS interfaces. OVS has been a Linux Foundation project since 2016, and it's uh, widely used in production. I think it's a popular choice for uh, the OpenStack Neutron plugin uh, to connect VMs. And you have like companies like DigitalOcean using it in their data centers for uh, virtual networking. It has a very active uh, developers community uh, with a lot of, uh, uh, oh, you'll see my, see my notes, all right. Let's, thank you for that. Yeah, that looks good to us, but you might want to get your notes on another screen, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's not. Uh, I tried that yesterday, but uh, is it still good now? It's good right now, yes, for us. All right, I'm very sorry about that. Um, uh, so yeah, it's uh, and, and uh, what was I? Yeah, so it has a very active developers uh, community with a lot of support for uh, from hardware vendors, uh, which uh, try to sell solution. Uh, with hardware offloading for OVS. Um, OVS is well integrated into uh, Linux. Uh, the OVS, it, it's based on a OVS kernel module, uh, which provides high performance forwarding, and it's been available in mainstream Linux since kernel version 3.3. And OVS, contrary to popular belief, will basically work out of the box in practically all Linux distributions. Uh, you don't need to install anything besides uh, the user space uh, daemons. And it's available even in some uh, esoteric distributions like uh, cloud provider specific container optimized distributions like uh, the new Amazon Ball Rocket, which is available on AWS. So how is OVS different from uh, the Linux bridge, for example? Well, OVS can be used as a drop-in replacement for the Linux bridge, but that's not very interesting. And what I said before is that it's programmable. Uh, and what does that mean? It means that you can define your own forwarding pipeline for packets and choose exactly what you want to happen to each packet. Uh, you program what we call match action flows where you choose which packet header fields you want to match on and which actions you want to take based on the result of those matches. Uh, it supports many protocols out of the box and in particular telling protocols such as VXLAN, Geneve, uh, GRE, and it's leveraging the Linux support for those protocols to implement that. It also integrates with contract, which means that you can match on connection tracking state and you can do like DNAT and SNAT from, from OVS. So how do you program uh, an OVS switch? Well, this is done through the OpenFlow API, which is like a very mature, stable and feature rich API. And I'm gonna get into more details uh, on the next slide. Uh, and, and finally, I guess unlike the Linux bridge, it kind of like gives you high performance packet IO when you need it. Uh, and even though the Linux kernel module for OVS uh, is the most commonly used data pass for OVS, there is also a user space data pass available which supports uh, DPDK and AFXDP. Uh, AFXDP is a technology based on uh, eBPF and XDP. Uh, and if you use DPDK, this comes at a cost. You cannot just like run uh, any application out of the box with DPDK and get maximum throughput. Uh, basically, if you want to use DPDK, that means you need, need to build your container application specifically for DPDK without uh, the Linux kernel stack, a uh, network kernel stack. And, uh, but if you have like a specific use case, like you're doing, you're doing service function chaining at the edge, for example, uh, it's definitely worth it and you're going to get amazing performance. So this slide shows what uh, the programmable match action pipeline looks like in an open flow switch like OBS. Uh, basically, a pipeline is a succession of tables. And uh, in the case of OBS, you can have up to 255 tables. And each one of those tables 
supports an arbitrary number of match action flows. Uh, so for each flow, you need to provide like a set of matches, uh, which error fields you want to match on, which metadata fields you want to match on, and you can like build and accumulate metadata throughout the pipeline. Uh, you can match on things like uh, the ingress port, for example. Um, and you also need to provide the set of actions you want to perform on the packet uh, if you have a match. And some of those actions can be performed immediately right after the match. For example, you can set a new metadata field or you can execute an action set that you accumulate throughout the tables in the pipeline at the very end of the pipeline, if you want to. And basically the advantage of having like a programmable pipeline like this with multiple tables is you want to organize your pipeline so that it makes sense and it's easy to understand. So you want each table probably to perform a logical function in your pipeline, such as L3 for one which means that usually flows in the same table are roughly going to be matching on the same subset of header fields. If you have a table in charge of doing L3 forwarding of your traffic, well, probably all the flows in this table are going to be matching on the IP destination address. And you add flows to the table uh, using what we call the control plane. And the most basic way of doing this is to use like the OBS a CLI tool called OBS OFCTL. Uh, but if you're building like a, some piece of software which uses OVS as a data pass, you probably want to do that programmatically. And you have like libraries that support OpenFlow in multiple languages, uh, Golang, for example. I think to illustrate this, I think the most sim simple example, the simplest example I can come up with that shows how to use OVS is, is pretty much this one. And what I like to do when I experiment with OBS is I like to use Linux network namespaces. I create two network namespaces and I connect them using an OBS switch and OBS bridge uh, and these interfaces, which is what is shown, shown on this picture here. And by default, OBS is just going to behave like the Linux bridge, like a L2 learning switch. And it's going to give me L2 connectivity between my two namespaces. So if I try to ping, um, interface the interface in network namespace B from network namespace A, it's just going to work. But now let's say that for some reason, I want to uh, drop all ICMP traffic and deny ICMP traffic between the two namespaces. Well, I, I can add this simple flow here, uh, which is uh, just going to match on all ICMP traffic. I'm going to give it a priority. Um, and I'm going to say, um, just drop that ICMP traffic. Now, if I insert this flow and I try to ping again, NSB from an NSA, sorry, uh, then this time it's going to fail. And I can use OVS or FCTL to dump the flows in, in my bridge. And I see two flows. The first one is the one I expect. It's just the one that's dropping all the ICMP traffic. The second one, which has priority zero, and I can call like the default flow in this case is just say that all traffic, which is not ICMP traffic, takes a normal action. And normal is kind of like that magic action that says that um, um, uh, the for that traffic, the OBS bridge should behave like a L2 learning switch, like the Linux bridge, basically. And that would what gives me L2 connectivity. So now that we've seen, I hope, what OpenV switch is, uh, maybe it's time for me to say why we think it's a good choice uh, to use OBS to build like a, a Kubernetes CNI or a Kubernetes network plugin. So first, and that's something I haven't mentioned yet, OBS is portable. Uh, it's available on both Linux and Windows. And we think it's huge because that means if you're build, building a network plugin with OBS, uh, you can basically use the same stack on both operating systems. And I'm going to contrast this with something like IP tables or eBPF. If you build like a, a CNI on top of eBPF, it's going to work great on Linux, but you kind of have to come up with a different data pass for Windows, which can make your code base more complex. OVS is also like ideal to build networking applications. It has native support for many protocols and a lot of network specific actions to do things like DNAT and SNAT. And it's like very fast to just build an OVS pipeline, which is going to implement all of Kubernetes networking. By all of Kubernetes networking, I mean a pod networking. You know that in Kubernetes by default, all pods can talk to each other. A network policy enforcement you can do in OVS and service cluster IP load balancing, you can do in OBS, which means that if you have that, you no longer need Q proxy in your cluster. And in addition to the uh, packet IO acceleration techniques like DPDK I mentioned previously, uh, a lot of vendors offers OBS hardware offloading support on their NICs. 
and it's very easy to enable. And we think the entire OVS Kubernetes networking pipeline can be offloaded to hardware on some NICs, which means that for applications that need it, and usually it's going to be like in, in bare metal clusters that you get that performance boost. But basically, you can achieve very high throughput, low latency, and reduce CPU footprint, which means you have more CPU cycles for your actual applications. And finally, OVS comes with a variety, variety of tools uh, for uh, troubleshooting and monitoring. You have the CLI tools that let you dump flows, but they also support things like packet tracing through the bridge. Uh, OVS exports like a lot of statistics counters for every flow and every port, and it integrates with standard flow information export protocols like uh, IPFIX, for example. And so this is exactly what, what we did with Project Entry. We used OVS as a data pass to build a Kubernetes network plugin. And the project uh, was open sourced by VMware last November. Uh, it supports like multiple networking modes based on whether you want like an overlay network or you don't want an overlay network. Uh, when you do use an overlay network, we have support for uh, IPsec for authentication and encryption. And right now we implement in OVS pod networking, uh, network policy enforcement, but we still rely on QProxy for service load balancing. This is something we're in the process of moving to the OVS pipeline. Uh, we like to say that Andrea is Kubernetes centric or Kubernetes native. Maybe that's kind of like a marketing term, but the idea behind that is that Andrea is not a complete SDN solution. It was like written specifically for Kubernetes and, and only supports uh, Kubernetes, which means we, we manage everything to keep it very simple. And we also try to use like the Kubernetes libraries as much as possible. For example, we have our own like API server. Uh, to build the communication channels between the different entry components. And finally, and this is the main reason for using OBS, uh, it enables us to run like entry uh, entry anywhere on VM based cluster, bare metal clusters, uh, public clouds, whether it's a do it yourself cluster that you build with compute nodes or uh, manage uh, community service like EKS. Uh, we only support Linux nodes for now, but we're in the process of, uh, and we're almost done with Windows support, thanks to the OBS support for Windows. I'm not going to go over this slide into too many details for lack of time, but this shows the different entry components and how they interact with each other. You have two major components, the agent that runs on every node with a Kubernetes daemon set that takes care of uh, configuring each pod's default network interface, among other things. And then we have the entry controller, which runs as a Kubernetes uh, deployment. And we have a centralized controller that's going to be watching for Kubernetes network policies and disseminating uh, uh, some computed internal uh, policies to, um, uh, to the different agents using, the, uh, using an instance of uh, the API server. We also integrate with Octant, uh, which is uh, Kubernetes resource visualization dashboard, and uh, it comes with a CLI tool called NCuddle, named after uh, kubectl. Now let's see how we can leverage OBS to build some good troubleshooting tools. And so these are some of the questions we want uh, our network plugin uh, uh, to be able to uh, help answer, and how we think OBS can help answer them. First question is, which policies are being implemented locally at each node. And we think that's useful when you want to troubleshoot network policy definitions or implementation. If a cluster operator defines a Kubernetes network policy, we want the entry as CLI to tell us for a given node how this policy is being enforced and on which local pods. But if we take one step back and we look at the bigger picture, maybe we want to be able to trace traffic end to end in a network. Um, maybe I want to proactively answer the question, can pod A talk to pod B? So we, we saw that OVS provides a tracing tool, but it only applies locally to a single switch. So we need to be able to extend this tool and we need to map OVS level objects, flows, to Kubernetes objects, um, pods, services, network policies. I should be able to, to send queries such as, can pod A reach service B and get a yes, no answer that I can tie back if needed to specific Kubernetes network policies. And finally, if we take yet another step back, maybe we want a, a global view of the network. Uh, how many connections I have, how much throughput, is there anything unusual happening? And we think this is something we can build on top of OVS IPFIX support, for example, by integrating with some 
uh, dashboards like uh, the open source Elasticflow project. So I'm not guaranteeing that we're going to implement all of this in Entria, but those are some examples of what we think is, is, is possible with uh, OVS. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that while working on network policy support in Entria, uh, some folks at VMware have realized that there were several issues with the Kubernetes upstream community test for network policy. I think it boils down to the fact that because KubeNet doesn't support Kubernetes uh, network policies, it's actually difficult to like, integrate those uh, tests in the larger Kubernetes CI. Uh, so we have an upstream cap to propose enhancements to the testing framework as well as a prototype implementation. And I have both links in the slide in case you want to take a look if you're interested. Uh, so to wrap it up, this is what we have discussed. Uh, OVS is a proven virtual switch technology, and we believe its ecosystem and community can benefit Kubernetes networking. Uh, and as Windows support in Kubernetes improves, we think having a unified data plane that can implement all the Kubernetes networking functions on both operating systems is very valuable. And uh, if you want to try an OVS-based Kubernetes network plugin, please take a look at the entry at GitHub. We're happy to help with any issues you may run into. Hopefully, you're not going to run into any issues. Uh, we have a roadmap available publicly, and uh, we are definitely open to suggestions if you think some things should be prioritized. I'm going to end on this slide, which shows how you can uh, deploy entry in your cluster with a single kubectl apply command. Uh, thank you everyone for joining and I think we can take questions. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, we have a couple questions. Uh, the first one's from Sudeep. Do we have Prometheus metrics to observe the accept, deny, or drop of flows? So in case of troubleshooting for any issues, it would be very helpful? Yeah, that's something we actually have an open pull request uh, for, uh, Prometheus integration. So we're going to try to uh, export uh, metrics using uh, the metrics endpoint in the API server. And uh, yeah, that's, that should show like uh, uh, the list of network policies uh, and how much traffic is dropped because of those network policies. Okay, and we have another question from Ricardo. What does an Antria? Sorry. Ent Entria. I guess Entria. no one agrees, but I usually say Entria. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, what does Entria use under the hood for implementing the network policies in the node? IP tables, EBPF? So, so what I said is we use o OVS and we try to use OVS for the entire data pass. Uh, so right now our only dependency on IP tables is, uh, or IPV is QProxy uh, basically, but we're moving that into the OVS. Everything is done within the OVS pipeline and that includes like uh, a network policy enforcement. It's very easy to have like uh, ACLs uh, in OVS. And uh, by doing everything in, in OVS, it works on both Linux and Windows without any changes to the data pass. And it's very easy to offload to hardware NICs for bare metal clusters. Okay, great. Uh, any other questions? Type them in the Q&A or if you're on YouTube, go ahead and you can put them uh, in YouTube. Yep. We just got one from Dan. Does OVS on Kubernetes work at the node level, or is it possible to connect pods directly to the other remote pods like network service mesh? Uh, so we operate right now entirely at the L3 level and uh, on a per node basis. So we have the typical use case is we have one OVS switch per node, and uh, we create tunnels between nodes. Um, uh, we don't try to do anything at layer seven for now. <laughs> 